What's up guys, it is GP here back with another episode of GP's Library. And I want to start this episode by first wishing you a happy new year. I hope your holidays were good. I hope you had a fun Christmas or Hanukkah or if I just hope you had fun with your family maybe. I hope that you had a good new year. I hope your new year is getting started. Um, is getting started well. I hope it's getting off to a hot start. I hope it's exciting. I hope you do whatever you want to do in these first few days of the new year to get yourself inspired for the rest of 2024. Hopefully I'll be coming out with these reviews, these GP library videos once a week. And I also want to start incorporating other videos here soon. I want to make content about other stuff as well. So um, that is just a little plan for 2024. But let me jump into today's book. And it is Fuck It, I'll Start Tomorrow by Action Bronson. So here's the book. Per usual, I'll start by telling you guys when I read it. I finished this December 21st of this past year, so I only finished this just a week and a half, a couple weeks ago, and clearly I read the physical copy. Um, I've only been reading physical copies of books recently, but I still bring it up because a lot of the books from my past, a few of them are audiobooks and some of them are ebooks as well, and I think a little context of that matters for whatever reason. I'm not exactly sure why I think that matters, but... I like to know kind of whether somebody listened to it or read it. I feel like it's a different feeling. You get some different takeaways, but maybe that's just me. Speaking of takeaways, let's get into my main takeaways from Fuck It, I'll Start Tomorrow. So in this book, Action Bronson talks about his path to becoming who he is, and he only kind of talks about it, to be honest. <laughs> He doesn't, he, he talks about some from his childhood, he talks, talks about some stuff from like more modern day and it was written during COVID time. So he talks about stuff like what was happening while he was locked down and stuff like that. But it's not as much like some previous books like the Rick Ross book I talked to you about, Trevor Noah's book, um, Issa Rae's book, Kevin Hart's book. Like those are more like step by step incremental how I got to where I am now. Not so much with Action Bronson, but at the same time, you can kind of piece it together based off what you know about him and through the stories, just kind of how he got to where he is now. It makes sense at the end, but I wouldn't say it's like in some type of succinct order or anything like that. And so my main takeaway from that is how long it took him to make it. I talked about this in the Bernie Mac video and other videos before. Action Bronson was in his mid 30s before he really started seeing full success in what he wanted to do, it took him some time. He was a high school dropout. He just was getting in trouble around his neighborhood. It just wasn't fitting into where he wanted to fit in. He wasn't the crowds he wanted to be in all the time. And it just took him a while to like grow into his own skin in terms of the success. And so once again, this is a takeaway from almost all kind of biographies or memoirs that I read is patience because it takes time to develop your art and I'm going to keep harping on it because it's something I like to keep reminding myself because of how easy it is to feel rushed and I think it's important that these authors really are trying to show people that it wasn't just overnight I didn't just wake up one day Action Bronson you know and that's not even his real name obviously but he morphed into Action Bronson if you will as he got older as he got more confident and as he got more skilled in the different facets of his life. And so, and so that brings me to my next point. And my next point is to be an artist. Action Bronson doesn't limit himself in the art that he does. He's a chef. He's a rapper, obviously. He's a like kind of like podcast or host person on Vice. He does television. He acts. Just create he paints. The book showed me the importance of just creating. Because a lot of times I come in my office. And I might not necessarily want to write that day. I might not necessarily want to film a video. I might not necessarily want to um, edit a video. I might not necessarily want to do whatever I had planned. But I do like to come into my office and be creative some way. And I feel like eventually it'll just snowball into whatever I'm supposed to be doing and to keep creating and to keep having projects. And Action Bronson is proof that that method it can work because there are a lot of multifaceted artists like most artists don't just do the art that they're famous for necessarily you know and so it, it really showed me do what you're interested in and that leads me and that's kind of like a leeway into another point 
is by doing what you're interested in, doing what you feel called to do, eventually you'll get to where you're supposed to be. Because Action Bronson went to culinary school. He's been interested in cooking his entire life. He didn't, Before he knew about rapping, before he knew, not before he knew about it, but before he knew he necessarily wanted to be a rapper, before he necessarily knew he wanted to be an actor, for sure, because it's very recent. He went with what he was interested in. He said, fuck everything else for now. He became a very good cook, a very good chef. Didn't know he was going to go with that. Probably definitely didn't like plan on being a TV chef personality and putting out cookbooks and stuff like that. But he's here now because he followed that path of his interests. So if you really follow what you're interested in, put the work in, stay interested. Eventually, your different interests can converge. You don't really have to choose. Things might not happen as fast as you want to in every different sector, but as long as you keep moving forward, they all still have possibilities in all different realms. You don't have to pigeonhole yourself and put yourself in a box to do what you've done in the past, what you're supposed to do, what other people tell you you should do, or even what you tell you should do. <laughs> you have way more options when you keep your mind open and you just decide, I'm going to create. I'm not necessarily going to create something specific, but I'm going to create. Yeah, the last thing I had written down was, as long as you keep trying, like things can happen. So as long as Action Bronson kept cooking, as long as he kept rapping, as long as he kept acting, as long as he kept hosting shows, things had a chance to grow and become what they have what they are. If you don't have your like hand in the game at all, things can't happen. So as long as you're working and moving forward, at least the evidence of this book, things still have a possibility of working out for you. So next, I'm going to talk about who I think the book is for. Obviously, when we talk about these people, it's for fans of the artists that I'm talking about. So if you're a fan of Action Bronson, this is a book for you. If you're a fan of New York hip hop and New York kind of culture and reading about it, this is also for you. He talks, he talks about how he spent his whole life in New York and how he knows New York and New York apartments and New York streets and all that type of stuff. Um, it was cool for me to like hear about it because obviously I've I've been I visited but obviously not being from there I'm not like the different streets and avenues and all this other type of stuff and the number systems and all this don't mean that much to me but I'm sure for some people out there who really know their New York shit they could get they would get even more out of it because when I read a book about somebody from Houston I do get more out of it than some other place at least understand it and able to extract the culture out of it a little bit more although it's not step by step it's still interesting so if you're somebody who enjoys if you like action bronson you kind of like his vibe or whatever and you enjoy entertaining stories it's another thing for that and there's a lot of relatable stories in there for people as well it's a very like down-to-earth book like action bronson's a star but you can tell he does do some stuff that's different like he talks about his more rich lifestyle but a lot of it's kind of like what you would think people would do when they're rich, like buy all these different dishes from all these different places and just taste them and stuff just to see like the different tastes and not really care about money and care like like kind of things like that. But it's not necessarily like insane shit that he's talking about It's stuff that actually feels doable, even if it's even if it's not. But I guess I say all that to say if you like an entertaining story, if you like just a fun story, I think it's a, a great book for you as well. And if you had a kind of troubled childhood or what somebody else would consider troubled childhood, because I don't think he considers it a troubled childhood, but I think most people consider like high school dropout, not really being able to achieve too many things for a while, having struggles with the, like, even he talks about his wage struggles, all these different type of things. If you're dealing with these things and it's kind of like objectively troubling, I think it can find like some solace in reading stories when somebody else who's successful through a lot of adversity as a kid. I guess that's really what I'm trying to say. Somebody who had a lot of adverse stuff happening in childhood, um, a mostly single mother. He knew his father, but wasn't too close with them in term, like in, a, in multiple different ways. Like he's mostly a single parent household. So with all that being said, and then having been close with his grandmother and being close with his family and also having families of multiple different ethnicities combining and the struggles and cool stuff that came from that. So 
Somebody who comes from a similar background of that, I think, could appreciate this book as well. Lastly, I like to talk about what I want to apply to my own life, walking away from this book, especially when I read nonfiction books. And the point I really would want to walk away with is to just keep creating. I brought this up earlier. I like to do different types of art as well. I like to make these videos as well as do other things. And there really is time to do it all. It's not time to do it all right now, but there is time to do it all. And by just incrementally working on all these different facets, you're setting yourself and giving you, you're setting yourself up for and giving yourself an opportunity to grow, to succeed. And that's what I want to stick to is to keep creating what I want to create and let it evolve as it will. Guys, it's GP with another episode of GP's Library. I suggest, fuck it, I'll start tomorrow. It's a pretty short, pretty easy read. It's entertaining. It's pretty relatable. And I think a lot of you guys would enjoy it. So, guys, it's been another episode of GP's Library. I will see you guys next time.